Okay, so what we're going to do is translate um, foreign currency. And so this is when we get we get all the accounting squared away. And we have uh, a subsidiary. And it's in another country. And there's gonna be two different methods of translation. The temporal method. This is a method that the functional currency is in US dollars. In other words, they translate everything into US dollars and those become part of our cash flow for the, for the US based company. Am I sharing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm getting weird. Probably me. All right, so this is when we have um, it's translated the, the the foreign currency is usually changed into U.S. dollars quickly and put into the cash flow of the U.S. company. The current method is when we do not change it into US dollars. We keep the functional currency in whatever the foreign currency is. So if we have, you know, the whatever the foreign currency is, that is what we're going to keep. We're going to keep that money over wherever it's at, and it's going to function independently, and it's not going to be part of our cash flows for the US part of the company. So this the US one is when it's um, folded into the US cash flows. And the foreign currency one is when uh, we don't fold it in. We keep them autonomous. They have their own cash flows. We have our own cash flows for the United States, and they're separate. Now, there's different reasons why we do these. Some in some countries, they have high inflation. And so if they have high inflation, you want to translate, you know, you, you, the whole trick is when you get a foreign currency that has high inflation, you cash it into US dollars or something more stable as quickly as possible. So because you're going to be if you sit on it, you're going to lose uh, money. So a lot of times that is a driving force behind switching it into US dollars. And it, it could also just be that sometimes the foreign countries are making a significant amount of money and that they, they may be making much more than the US branches. You know, like some tobacco companies that we have in the United States are they make a lot of their money internationally. Um, and so they, you know, the cash coming in from international is pretty significant and then they changed into US dollars. So, um, yeah, so that is, yeah, different methods. And, and again, it's, um, there's also that keeping it, so, so about, you know, why would they keep it in the foreign currency? Well, part of it has to do with bringing money into the United States from a foreign subsidiary is that it can get taxed. And we'll talk about that in the next chapter. But if you have a foreign, if you have funds that come in from a foreign country, maybe the foreign country has an income tax of, say, 11%, and the U.S. tax is 20. When you bring that money into the United States, it's going to get taxed. The United States says, no, no, money in the U.S. is taxed at 20%. So you, you, you paid 11, you got to pay the other nine. So sometimes there's that money can't come back in because if it does come back in, it's going to get hit with U.S. taxes. Uh, that's one of the reasons why a lot of times they leave it over. There. And, you know, if, if they need the money, if, you know, if they have operations all around the world, a lot of times there's no reason to bring it back to the United States. So... Anyway, um, there's different reasons why they do it, but regardless of, you know, we're going to use these two different methods, and it's almost like baking a cake a little bit, and that they tell you what to, you know, what what to translate it at, and then you plug it in and see what the cake comes out like. Okay, so let's go to problem one. Uh, by the way, if you if you do want to print these. The way to print them is to hide these three columns 
and then uh, it'll print it kind of kind of normal. Um, if you don't hide those columns, it's going to look terrible. <laughs> it's tiny. So if you if you are going to print this, and there's nothing right, you know, nothing wrong with printing it at all. Um, but it is um, hide these three columns, and you can always print this translation page separately. And this one I think is set up so that yeah, it'll print out fairly reasonably. I'm going to do the, the reason I'm doing an Excel, first of all, is we a lot of um, uh, calculations, and it's just a lot neater for me to do it in a, hand, in a Word file. Okay, so let's take a look here. The functional currency is British pound. So that is a foreign currency. So we will be using the um, current rate method. And yeah, so this is the method we're going to be using. OK, and it's kind of we just go through here and it's um you know we use whatever they tell us to okay so this is what we're going to be looking at uh looks like mostly average yeah hold this whole thing okay so So this is a method we're going to be using. You know, I'm going to get rid of this one for now. Hide it. Okay. So we're going to use the current rate method. So let's see how this all works out. All right. So revenues. You can notice pretty much everything for the current rate method is going to be on average. And it's going to be on average because during the year, you're going to have some sales in January, February, March, April, whatever. And so you're going to take an average uh, exchange rate to value these because they're going to happen throughout the year. This is going to happen January through December. January through December. January, you, know, you get the idea. Okay. So revenues at the average cost. And let's make that one the average cost. Uh, we'll make that one turquoise. Okay. I'm going to multiply them. All right, so that's what we'll have for sales in US dollars. Same thing for cost of sold. We do it on the average. And we'll simply subtract those two. For this one, because they're both at the same rates, they look funny. Well, I know why it looks funny. Um, you could multiply the gross profit by that too, but you, you, you gotta be careful because on some of the other ones, these aren't the same, and then you have to do it this way. Okay, operating expenses without depreciation. Average. De 
depreciation expense. So this method is also average. Okay. Now this one, gain on sale of equipment, this is for a specific date. So if it's for a specific, you know, this isn't throughout the year. This didn't happen January through December. This happened on one date, 4-30-24. So we're going to get the historical for that, which is here. Now let's make that green up. Okay, now, this is going to be our net income before our remeasurement. Actually, no, we don't need this one. This is for the temporal method. We're doing the, the um, current rate method. We can ignore this. In fact, I'm going to break a line through it. No, I'm not. Oh, here, straight through. Let's see what that does. It's only temporal method. We're using the um, current method. Okay, so this is our net income. Now, you'll notice something here. Even though most of it's at the average cost, there is this one in here at the uh, historical cost because it was not that much time. So... This is already a what they call a composite. It's got more than one exchange rate. So that's why you see this and it says composite. That's why. Okay. So coming down here, our beginning retained earnings. This will be done at the historic rate. Retained earnings, first year, historical rate. So we'll go to 1124. Let's make that orange. The hardest part about this is the color coordination. Okay, um, income. We are simply going to bring this down from up here. That is our income. Okay, dividends declared and paid on 9124. So 9124, we need another color. Uh, purple? Ooh, purple. Okay, and let's add all this up. And again, this is what they call a composite rate because it's got all kinds of numbers in there now. It's got 125 trans uh, foreign currency translation. It's got a um, 122, it's got 130, 126. It's all over the place. So it's a composite of all those. So there is no one translation. You can find an average of all those if you want to divide it, but um, there is no one average for that. Okay. Assets. 
Everything is at current. Well, that makes it easy. The current rate is the rate at the end of the year. And at the end of the year, if you think about the, the balance sheet, the balance sheet is at the end of the year. So functional currency is in British pounds, and we're going to keep it in British pounds. We're not translating these in, we're not bringing these into cash flows, US cash, we're not uh, exchanging them. So we're simply going to take the end of the year, whatever the, the uh, current rate, the current rate is really the year end rate, and that's what we're going to value it at. So the balance sheet will be at December 31st. We're going to find out what the translation rate was at December 31st, and that's what we're going to use. Okay, so coming up here, I think there's a way I can freeze these panes. I know there is. Ooh, look at that, see? All right, so. No, that's not it. This is it. Let's make that um, red. Okay, so this is going to be the year end rate, and this is what we're going to use for pretty much everything. Um, Okay, now let's go to liabilities. Liabilities, again, are current rate. Common stock is going to be at the historical rate, I think. Yep, there we go. Historical rate. And so is additional paid in capital. We don't have any additional paid in capital, so we're not going to worry about that. So this will be our um, our give us that will be at the historical rate, and the historical rate is one one twenty twenty four. Oh, so here. Okay, so our retained earnings. Uh, retained earnings are the are two eighty one, so that's what we're gonna use. So this is simply taking this number from the retained earnings here. And put it down here. And we're going to add this up and see how much we're off by. <clears throat> okay, so look at our total assets. Let's make that yellow. And our total liabilities and equity. And so we're going to see what the difference is between these. So 40,000, 640,000, you know, I'm going to do <laughs> We're going to subtract those and see what they're off by. Okay. So 77.50 is our uh, translation gain or loss. Here's a question, is that a gain or a loss? This is what we have in assets. 
this is what we owe. We owe it to the creditors and to the um, shareholders. So this is the these are the assets. This is what we owe. This is the difference. Is that a gain or a loss? Gain. Yep. That's a gain. And what we're going to do is plug this in here. Seven 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 five fifty. And so this is actually going to be that. Um, I, mean, I should have these the same color. I don't know. Maybe. Well, make it uh... and so this will actually go on the balance sheet. This will be in um, the cumulative income. The um, um, you know it'll, it'll be in the uh, equity section. It will not go through the income statement. And the reason for that is we didn't convert these into US dollars. These are not in US dollars. So it's sort of like the it has not finished the entire cycle. And you know, this will this can change from year to year, simply based on you know the dollar. So in other words, this is not really a very um, hard number. This is not a number that of something that has actually happened. We have not actually changed these dollars into U.S. dollars, this currency into U.S. dollars. So uh, we put this in with the other comprehensive income. And part of the reason why we do that in other comprehensive income is that it could change, uh, you know, and, and change for the things that are already done. Um, things like property, plant, and equipment, and all that's going to hang around for a number of years. But... Again, these dollar amounts could change as far as the translation is concerned. So this could change from year to year. Question on that? So this is what we would do when we would we would translate. And, and, and just to bring this kind of full circle, I don't know if you guys have had the um, advanced accounting. Maybe you're having this, this uh, term. But in advanced accounting, we do the consolidations. We take the, all the companies consolidate. So if a company has, for instance, Ford, Ford has the Ford Motor Company, but they probably, I'm sure they have other subsidiaries, things that they bought around the world, different other, other companies and all that kind of stuff. And they consolidate those financial statements. So there'll be the Ford Motor Company, but then there'll be consolidated financial statements and that'll have all the companies, and whatever other companies they own will be included in there. A lot of those companies are foreign. You know, if, if you're Ford and you want to get into uh, you know, wherever, um, a lot of times it's easier to buy a company that's already got a name and use that to you do your manufacturing and you know, all that other stuff that you do. So um, a lot of times these consolidations, you first translate them and then you combine them into consolidated financial statements. Okay. I you know what? Actually, I think I'm. I think I'm teaching. Um, it's, a, it's an advanced uh, accounting, so I think I'm teaching it in a couple of weeks here. Like, I should know that, shouldn't I? Okay. So this is problem one. So this is a um, the current. Oh, I froze the pain too. So this is the current rate method. And this is uh, problem three is a similar one. And so I'll, we'll, I'll sign that as homework. But this, uh, I'll put right in problem three. This is similar to number one. Uh, put it here. <laughs> okay. So 
So problem three is going to be similar to problem one. All right, now we're going to do problem two. Problem two is a very familiar looking layout, except that the foreign, the, uh, excuse me, the um, functional currency is US dollars. Okay, so notice that these are exactly the same, I think they should be. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, they're exactly the same, except for the method that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using this temporal method for doing the translation on this one. So this is on problem two, which is, again, exactly the same as problem one, except that we have, um, we're, we're, we're immediately taking the money and putting it into the U.S. cash flows. Okay, so let's take a look here. I want to be so I'm going to go here. I'm going to get rid of the foreign currency one so I don't get confused. I'm going to hide it. Okay. So a lot of this stuff is fairly similar. Oh, wait a minute. What do I do here? Good at the spacing on this. I thought I corrected it, the spacing on this, but I goofed it up. Okay. Uh, problem two. So we're going to be using this temporal method over here. And the main difference between these is that this one is sort of comes full circle. These are dollars that are actually put into U.S. dollars uh, during the year. Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look at how we do this. Okay, revenues, average. I'm going to use the same. Look at this. I'm going to copy this over here. I think they're the same. Are they, are they... I'm going to check and make sure they don't change. Okay. I'm going to use the same uh, highlighting, whatever. Okay. So, average 125. We make the sales throughout the year, and this is our average cost, average uh, translation rate, I should say. That looks very familiar. Okay, now, inventory, though, is measured at the historical rate. So here's the inventory historical rate. I got to make a new... color for that. And let's make it, did I use teal yet? I don't think I used teal, did I? Yeah, I did. Okay, let's not do that. Let's use uh, blue. Yeah, that looks too similar. Hardest part about this accounting is here we go. Nothing looks like that. Okay. So inventory at the historical. Okay. Very good. All right. So I'm just going to add that up. Okay. Uh, most expenses are going to be at average cost. So we'll still use the average cost down here. Depreciation expense 
is going to be at the historical rate, and we're going to use the historical rate from uh, 1, 1. Because this is the, uh, the idea is that the, uh, this is one first year of depreciation, that the property plant and equipment is the same property plant and equipment that we had when we purchased the thing. Okay, so let's take a look at that one. That one is uh, 130. Gain on sale of equipment on 430. 430, was, this is the same as the other one. Copy it down. And so we will see gross profit minus those last uh, ones. So this will be our net income. Now, yeah, this method is much more involved because it actually is sort of what we call closing the loop it's the dollars are actually being brought back to the united states okay uh first year retained earnings same as before Net income, we will use this. Our net income. Dividends declared, this will be the same as before. Same date, obviously. And that'll be our retained earnings. Okay. Coming down here, uh, current rate will be used for cash and receivables. Current rate was 132. Inventory, they tell us the inventory is put on the books at historical cost. So the historical cost for the inventory was 123. Property plan equipment goes on at the uh, historical cost. And that'll be the historical cost at the beginning of the year because that's when we brought the the um, proper plant equipment. And we'll add all that up. So that's our total assets. And again, this one, you know, you can see it's, it's all over the place. You know, compare that to, you know, this, where they're all the same. And this one, eh, a couple are the same, but 
allowed to go by historical costs. Okay, liabilities are going to be at the current uh, deferred income. That's uh, sort of like um, prepaid. That kind of thing would be at the historical. We're not going to worry about that. But the uh, current liabilities will be uh, the, the current rate, which is the year end rate. Common stock, same thing uh, for at the historical rate. That. And the retained earnings. We are not going to have this. Because our gain or loss is going to go right through the um, uh, income statement. Okay, so our translation gain or loss will be And this will be a loss. We owe six hundred thirty-nine thousand. We have six hundred twenty-four thousand in assets, so we're going to have a loss of negative fifteen thousand three seventy-five. And that is what we're going to plug in up here. Negative fifteen three seventy five. Excuse me. And so this will correct our income. This is our measurement using the temporal method. It goes right in the income statement. Why? Because we translate that into U.S. dollars. These are, are in U.S. dollars, and the measurement difference was 15,375 negative, and that's going to affect our income. So, you know, comparing the two, I mean, uh, for instance, the income was 52900 for this method, uh, less for that. Uh, retained earnings, similar, but a little bit less. And our total assets are less by, what, about 16000 So that's the two methods. And the temporal method is the one that is the more difficult. And that's because uh, there is a closing of the cycle. And what I mean by that is that these are actually have been translated into US dollars. And because they've been translated into US dollars, it's not going to change. You know they are they are in U.S. dollars, and it's not that from one year to the next. This one from one year to the next, it could change, but on this one, it can't. So it's going to be like closing the cycle. Problem number four is going to be homework, and that'll be similar to number two. So three, uh, so we did one and two together. Three and four will be homework, and we'll go over these next class. Okay. Oop. All right. Hey, we got on a little early today. Okay. Uh, any questions, fellas? No, I'm good. Okay.
All right. I'll see you next week. See you next week. Take care.